full of memories, the good and the bad. Hey. Remember the first time you dropped around to her place? Wow. Or the first time she saw yours? Well, that is nice. Tell them. Remember when your parents first met hers? What? For better or worse. We marry. Yes. <laughs> there are some days that you'll never forget. Somebody call an ambulance. Pack to the rafters. Next Tuesday, 8.30, TV1. It's a scene more suited to the courts in Hollywood, but at central Auckland. And Millie Holmes is mobbed as she's ushered into a waiting car by her famous father. When it all came out, the arrest, the court appearance, the media interest was naturally enough intense and cruel at times. Are you proud of your daughter? Well, I know the game. No resentment there, but it was just horrible, nevertheless. Infinitely sad for my daughter, humiliating for us. But we had to face it square on. I believe that. I believed it then. Believe it now. Millie is sick, and she has a big hill to climb. I'm sure every parent with teenagers knows what we're going through. It became so all-consuming, we didn't even want to talk about it amongst ourselves. But now is the time to talk and to try to understand and to look for some answers. Why am I doing this documentary? Why am I helping make this documentary? I don't want to be the poster boy for P. But when P invades someone's life, it invades a whole family's life. You lift the scab and there's a gaping hole and it's a tunnel with no answers. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm just a dad asking questions. And I have many questions. Probably the most urgent is how do I get my daughter off this drug for good? Is that even possible? Everything that's happened to us so far suggests it's a hellish habit to kick. I wanted to meet someone who had been deep into the PC and had fought their way out. Someone who stopped, as they say, chasing the ghost. Young Christy Pearson from Whangarei was my first meeting. It really does take your soul. And, you know, people I've known that were super intelligent going places years ago, I now look into their eyes and there's nothing. I had a couple of friends that were um, cooking it for the gangs. Those times, of course, when I was associating with them, I didn't have to pay for it. Other times, we'd have to do things to pay for it, just other sorts of stuff. Like? The transporting. Just nice. help on the transportation. Yeah, that's right, because they ha sort of had this mindset that no one ever suspect a young school kid, and no one ever did. Christy is the first person I've met in this journey from whom I get a glimpse, just a glimpse, of understanding. So you'd walk round to the cops? Yeah. What would have happened to you if you'd helped the cops? I don't even want to think about that, to say the honest truth. I just, I wouldn't, I'm not that type of person. It is, is, it, is it that heavy? Well, it is. It is, you know, and uh, then again, I know that the cops wouldn't have done anything. They would have went in there and busted them, maybe put them in jail for a while. They would have got out and they would have carried on, if not through jail. So you've been for about four and a half months. Yep. And then you decide you better do something. Oh, uh, yeah, I just... Why? It wasn't. Um, people telling me it was wrong. It was actually walking into a house one day, walking into my friend's room and seeing him go from being... Just an amazing guy, you know, real handsome. Guitarist. To just, yep, an amazing guitarist. To just sitting in his own crap, um, biting holes in his arms. And that was when, you know, I just couldn't believe it, you know, and he'd stopped playing guitar and that was his natural high. Now it was just nothing. He'd... Did you hate yourself coming off it? I did, I, and I hated everyone. Anything I loved was me. As the interview ended, it was hard not to be vulnerable, hard not to share, hard not to ask for advice. And no, she's well into head down to, she's got a head down to boyfriend. You've got to get her out of the circle. Okay, no. you just pick her up, just do it, just whatever it takes, her. just just take her, just put her out of that way. Okay, I mean... She's in love with him. <laughs> yeah, she'll be in love with him or the pee. Yeah. Well, I've, I've kidnapped her once. Yeah. She's 20 now. She's an adult. She asked me if she could come home again. 
Yeah. And I said, no, I'll have to see Millie. And that's a, never really do, got discussed. But if she'd made a real case to me, yeah. I would have had to argue with Deborah, you see. And then I got to go after my marriage. Yeah. You know, we've been brutalised for four or five years by this. Yeah. It's just a common story, eh? It's what it fucking does. You know, you just, just be there as a father and just listen for her. That's all I can say. Christie's taught me a couple of important things. First, that people that peddle this stuff are utterly ruthless, as ruthless as the heroin pushers of the Mr. Asia era. They think nothing of using school kids and trashing their lives. But another lesson, Christie's experience of seeing her friend dissolving, the life of her friend dissolving in front of her mentally and, and physically, shocked her into getting off pee, but it, but it wasn't easy, as she says. But it does give me hope. I suppose for my daughter, people can quit. So I started looking on the internet, wondering this. Sure, there are shocking images, but if you get sufficiently revolted by the pictures, what advice is there about quitting? And I'm quite exasperated by what I read and discover, an approach to P called harm minimization. No matter how you read this advice, it's kind of saying to you, if you're gonna take them, here's how to take them safely. And here's what's going to happen to you. You're going to fly through the night with the greatest of ease, is one of the sentences in this harm minimization advice. That speaks to me of a lack of awareness of how evil, how destructive, how all-consuming, how powerful this drug is. It, it, it says to me, these people aren't taking the ravages of this bloody drug seriously enough. When I think of the total, holistic, uh, gigantic upheaval it caused in our family and the destruction of so much of our family life. I think harm minimization sounds pathetic. Yeah. Hmm. I drove north to Whangarei. Someone had told me I simply had to meet Katie Robinson. Katie's story turned out to be one of the most disturbing I've ever heard. But I gather it all started with Katie appearing to manage quite well on her pee habit. Harm minimization personified, you might say. And I wanted to find out if it was true. I started using pee about uh, three years ago. I had this newfound freedom, separated from my husband. And I um, had all this freedom, because the marriage was very controlling. Uh, to all of a sudden, lots of freedom, my own woman, being able to do what I wanted. And I got introduced through the party scene to this danger called me. It is truly a performance-enhancing drug. Yes, yes, you can... Um, I mean, in 48 hours, hours, you can get anything yes, done. Anything, anything. You can... Um, your workload is totally and absolutely... Uh, because you're so fixed on what you're doing, you get so much done. And then it's a case of, in 48 hours, doing a week's work. And then, of course, coming down, sleeping, whatever. But bottom line is, in that 48 hours, it is so productive. But you thought you could control it really well. Yes, yes, and that is the ridiculous part of it. But yeah. you did, Katie. To some degree. To some for, degree. For a, quite a while. Yes. You also set aside space to come off it, didn't you? Yes. To come down. Yes, yes, because I realised that there was a time where I would be on it and the bag would run out. So when the bag did run out, I didn't want to go home unshowered, un uncleaned, or groggy and, and not fed. So it was a case of I would have my time of getting high and enjoying it. Then I would have my time of uh, coming down, which would be asleep, and then I would do all those maintenance kind of things. Then you get back and life goes on. Yes, yes, and I, that's why I could disguise my habit for quite a while. But very few disguises last forever. And I was to learn that Katie's somewhat charmed run with pee was to come to a brutal and savage end. The law, thank God they catch up with you, because otherwise you're going to end up dead. And that is exactly where this story goes next. And I remember looking into her eyes and she's was shallow breathing and it was like, my God. that 
junk mail? Who the hell is sending me this stuff? She was. I don't want to receive it. But what can you do? I don't want to have anything that I haven't asked for. I decided, right, let's let's do something about it. She spammed the spammers. You're in trouble. You won't believe their reaction. Fair go, Wednesday, 7.30, TV1. Choose Expo for the warmest feet in the world. Da, presto. Dobbiamo cucinarla, dobbiamo mangiare. Sì, Mette basilico. <gasps> Cos'è questo formaggio che metti? Se ti vedeva mia mamma? Every home in New Zealand is different, which is why Panasonic make a wide range of heat pumps. As you can see, it's the energy efficient way to heat your home. For Panasonic for your free Panasonic heat pump home assessment. We love the huge range of cheeses from all the nations of the world, but the cheese we love the most comes in the big blocks. The cheese I used to slice in thick chunks to have on a pile of crackers after school. The cheese we cube to put on a toothpick with pineapple. The cheese we grate to put in a delicious white sauce to make cauliflower cheese. I love broccoli cheese. It's the cheese on our lasagna, the cheese in our macaroni cheese, the cheese on our pizza, the cheese in our souffle. It's the cheese that keeps the country running. Whether it be soft and nutty Colby, low-fat Edam, versatile mild, or sharp and tangy tasty, the big blocks of cheese find their way into every meal of the day, cooked or straight from the packet. Shop for all the meals of the day with big blocks of cheese and shop smart in New Zealand. than you do with regular free TV. So if you've got the time, then we've got the telly. They were telling me about picking peas at a place near the campsite where we might be staying. So you could go and pick some peas while I marinate the steak. Anyway, do you remember the pea and potato mash we had at Melanie's wedding? Gorgeous colour. I was thinking, when we get the, the new picnic, I might get a monogram. Jackpotted. Win the four wins boats, two million cash, plus the travel, the platinum card, and the cars. Win big Wednesday. Start living it up on Thursday. If there's one thing most guys don't want to talk about, it's erection problems. But this condition could also be a symptom of other medical issues like diabetes or high cholesterol. That's why it's important to have a checkup with your doctor and why you should ask them about Levitra. Levitra is clinically proven to prolong erection duration, regardless of underlying health issues like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, or diabetes. This means Levitra can bring you both confidence and longer lasting performance. So forget the frustration and the worry and have a chat with your doctor about Levitra. A free sample is available if it's right for you. You have chubby children. That's your fault. It's time to get back to basics. The reason that kids are fat is because they eat too much stuff. Controversial or common sense? No one tells you about that. The Politically Incorrect Parenting Show. Wednesday, 8 o'clock, TV1. You become deceitful. You become a liar. You become a horrible person. And Katie Robinson is answering one of my big questions. Can you manage a raging addiction to pee and stay in control? Her answer, I suspect, will be no. I had the uh, half a million dollar home. I had the two businesses. Everything was freehold. Three lovely children. And the businesses have gone? Yes, very much gone. The farm's gone now? Yes, yes. Everything's gone, except? Except my home. I've got my home and I've got my children. And at the end of the day, everything was burnt away at the bottom of a pipe. 
Because P is so often inextricably linked with crime, with very bad criminals, with acts of mayhem, with the ever-present threat of death and maiming, Katie's involvement with the P world found her in the middle of a scene straight out of a very violent movie. Machete, swords, knives, and a man, it seemed, about to lose his life. In the lounge, the males were... Uh... Pretty much, it was um, an execution type scenario. Um, was everyone peed up? Absolutely. Roaring. 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 Katie's telling me about the day the black hole finally opened up for her, and she found herself squarely in the middle of a pea fueled killing field. This just bloke had blood all over him, and they still wanted to just chop him up. It was like, wow. So it was a case of. Um, um, I couldn't get out past the door. They were by the door, and uh, I was standing there. And that's when the girl turned. The girl came up from behind me and grabbed me. And that's when I spun around. And the um, yeah, she got stabbed. It was a look in her eye. It um, ruptured her lung, and she couldn't breathe. And I remember looking into her eyes, and she's shallow breathing. And it was like, my God. Katie has a date with the judge and jury in a few weeks from the day on which we meet. Katie was frank with me, and she's worked hard at recovery. Where are you at now? I'm at a real good place, a real cool place. I've found all those things. I've got rosy coloured glasses on without meth, and it took a long time, but it's so worth it. Your life before meth you thought was bad, but it wasn't really. What the life meth gives you is bad. It's horrible. It's repulsive. You are totally clean now. Totally clean now. <laughs> totally clean. I detoxed, went to a Salvation Army bridge program, and that's where I am now currently, at the Salvation Army working there. And where I possibly might end up, at least I can say, if it's a life behind bars, at least it's a life. I was just a walking dead when I was an addict, just waiting to die. What would you say to a young person who's off a pipe? Oh, please don't take it. Don't look at me. I mean, I'm one of the old school, and look at what I've lost. Look at where, what I'm facing. Don't do it. Well, a couple of learnings here. When Katie finally decided she wanted help, eventually she was able to get it. In her case, it was the Sallies, the Salvation Army, their bridge program. And that's the detox thing. You might be there for about six weeks. You've got to get the drug out of the system before you're sane enough again to begin some real work on yourself, some real rehabilitation. But detox comes first, and I'm under no illusion. Detox is tough. It's cold turkey, unless you're under sedation. But there's no pee, no other drugs, no booze. It is denying your body something, something your mind says it cannot do without. Here. I'm back at Capri <laughs> Clinic in Auckland, and this is where my daughter detoxed. And it worked for a while. At that time, of course, we were all so focused on wondering if Millie was going to come right. But now I'm back to try and understand why coming off pee is so hard. When the blood and brain level of methamphetamine starts going down, the brain receives a message that says you're going to die if you don't get some more. And it's not a phony message. It's the same message that gets when you're starving to death or when you don't have water or air. And at that point, 100% of the people will begin to steal, deal, and prostitute. All of those socially unacceptable behaviors that most people wouldn't do. But in order to get pee, they don't think twice. Mm. Powerful drug and then terribly insidious. You know, when somebody uh, has a pee problem, they only really ever act when they get into crisis. So the family comes on board or whatever it is that causes that initial person to access treatment. You need to act then. There can be no waiting times for detox. Right. It's, it's a medical, medical emergency. It's just a medical as much as a heart Excellent. attack or, or any other uh, trauma because they have this short window of, of acceptance built on pain. Wrecked car, go to jail, uh, kicked out of the house. You know, they have this crisis that says, I need help. And then let the crisis pass, and the desire for help also goes away. So are we winning the battle or are we losing the battle at the moment? Personally, I think we're losing the battle at the moment. So what do we need? 
Well, I think we need a big picture approach. I think we need, uh, we certainly need acute detox facilities. We need long-term programs. So you've got your residential component, then you've got your continuing care components, uh, programs that really encourage that reintegration into a new way of life. You know, we here at Capri, we take them out fishing, mini golf. Sober fun, like you know, signs. Racing cars and stuff. And people say, what are you doing having all that fun with these people? Well, you know, if they don't learn to have fun clean and sober, you know, they're, they're gonna end up back, uh, they often end up back down that, that road. Do we have anywhere near the kind of facilities we need and the number of facilities we need? Well, it seems obvious that we do not because there are people dropping through the crack all the time. Mm -hmm. The problem is many people, when they have the crisis, don't have the resources to access a, a publicly, a privately funded program. If I've learned anything from our family's experience is that you've got to be able to take people out of that toxic environment they're in and give them a decent chance to get clean. You can't just, the courts can't just bail them and throw them out in the street again, back to their pee adult mates and all that temptation. Because as Tom Claunch says, the inevitable result is ghastly. They stay the same, but they slowly deteriorate. And they go from a beautiful high school cheerleader or math club president to a snaggletooth poxed whore down on P Road. And ultimately, the family, particularly if there are siblings involved, they have to say, we can't take any more. The rest of the family has got to go on. And I know this to be true. Millie was arrested again. And now she faces charges in three different courts. Millie's in court on Friday. Are you going? I don't think so. Not anymore. Perhaps I should. I don't know. You must feel like you're being ripped in half. Well, it just rips you right up and... How many times can you walk past cameras into a district court? Why should I? But hard as all this business continues to be, down on the farm, here at the well, I am, every now and then, asking myself some big questions about what I might have done differently. And for the moment, I don't really have the answer to that. But what I wanted to discover next was equally as challenging. In the face of the waves of P-related crime, what can one person do to try to turn back the tide? Just ahead on tonight, provoked or premeditated murder accused Clayton Weatherston awaits his fate. And heroic rescue saving children from a flaming four-wheel drive. And the sound of music revived in Wellington's railway station. Join us for all that and tomorrow's weather after chasing the ghost. Kleenex Silk Touch tissues feel to you. They feel like an ears. Kind of like this. <laughs> Something like this. New Kleenex Silk Touch. Feel the difference. You won't believe it. Put that extra dollar to work at Warehouse Stationery with loads of items for only one dollar. Buy this compact notebook and get Microsoft Office for only one dollar. Or pick up this bookcase and get the second one for only one dollar. Clean up with hundreds of Warehouse Stationery dollar deals on now. <coughs> Vicks Vapor Drops clears the nose, soothes the throat. <sighs> oh, yes. Oh, no. Whistle's blown. He's not happy. He's not happy with ripped shorts, scruffy boots, and no sign of a sweatband. Into his top pocket, and they're off. Off to Rebel Sport for the red card winter clearance. A mountain of shoes is reduced to clear. There's 30% off these winter essentials, 40% off all hockey equipment and all rugby and soccer protective gear, and these Camelback hydration packs have 30% off.
Get going to the Red Card Winter Clearance because it's going off. No one's got more sports gear than Rebel Sport. Make your dollar go further at the Tile Warehouse for the best value on tiles and natural stone. Kitchens and bathrooms, living and outdoor, we bring the world to you and we make your dollar go further. Come and be inspired only at the Tile Warehouse. How do you decide who to build your new home with? When I saw this completed, my mouth dropped. It was just, I walked through it and I, I, I had no words to express what I felt. It was so, so beautiful, so elegant, elegantly simple. And no question they're the best builders in New Zealand, but I think they may be the best builders in the world. <laughs> <laughs> if you're building a new home, you should choose a registered master builder. Award-winning excellence, guaranteed. Simply the best 80s rock ballads. 34 80s rock classics on two CDs. Simply the best 80s rock ballads. It's out now. Indulge your heart at the food show. Delicious food and wine tasting, celebrity chef cooking demonstrations and fabulous show specials. July 30th to August 2nd, ASB Showgrounds. Every now and then, a really good idea sees the light of day. The new dry bar's heated collapsible clothes rack is one of those. Simple yet clever, so safe and silent yet tough. It won't fall apart. Gentle for your delicates, lace, nylon or wool. Say no more to not quite dry, then fold up your dry bars as well. Best of all, dry bars will save you lots of money. 70 to 80% cheaper to run than a standard tumble dryer. Just $199 and we'll give you a small items hammock free. Call to order on 0800 dry bars. Call now. Having just been told by the guys at the Capri Clinic that they think we're losing the battle with pee, the guy I'm off to meet with next has the reputation of knowing more about pee than anyone else in New Zealand. You hear people, uh, government officials and people saying, oh, well, the problem's platoed. Oh, sure, it's platoed. It's platoed at the worst that, that, that exists in the world. Probably you've seen and heard Mike Sabin before in the media. What we've seen is that addiction rates rise, crime rates rise, uh, child abuse rates rise. Mike is a former cop, he's obsessed, and it's a, a great obsession, with the idea of beating P. He's formed his own organisation, it's called MEFCON. Mike has no doubt about the scale of the P problem in this country. Now, what about the cops? Are the cops on top of the problem or not? Of course they're not. No. Uh, we had an opportunity in the, probably between 2000 and 2003 to knock this on the head. And at that time, the government was insisting on, on achieving target results around burglary, around theft, around car knocking, around uh, you know, assaults and things like this. Why volume crime was increasing? Because the prevalence of P was increasing, in my view. Mm. So now we're focusing on the, on the symptom, not the cause. The, the acetoephedrine or, or, and, and other ingredients for pure meth, who brings them into the country? Well... Who's doing that? Well, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, so it can be anything from triads and Asian cartels. How do you know it's multi-billion? That's a big number. Uh, well, you just do the maths on it, Paul, at a, at a million dollars a kilo. Uh, and when you just got to look at the seizure rates to realise that it's a multi-billion multi dollar problem, all right? Now, Sabin's not exaggerating, and I, I, I'd read just before meeting him, and listen to these numbers, that an estimated $3.7 billion worth of P has slipped through our borders in a recent four-year period. Now, the budget to run the entire police force over that same period was $3.9 billion. Health and Drug Advisory Authority's attitude to drugs is this. They accept that drugs are a reality in our community, wherever you go. Therefore, if you're going to take P, here, and they have it on the website, you can find all the bullet points, how to take P, a P on a night out safely. Now, you object to that with every cell in your body. Why? Well, I mean, to me, it's tantamount to saying to your kids, I don't want you to play on the railway tracks, but you're probably going to. So just keep an eye out for those big steel things that keep trundling down every now and then, mm. because they could devastate your life and kill you. The United Nations says that all member states should adhere to, in terms of pr pr protecting their societies against drugs, nowhere, nowhere in the language of the, the Commission uh, and the conventions is the words harm reduction or harm minimisation mentioned. Nowhere. In fact, our policy is totally contrary to the United Nations conventions on narcotic drugs. There's an opportunity with a change of government for change, simple as that. New Zealand could actually be a global example about how to fix a catastrophic drug problem like P for every family who finds themselves in your position. Um, you know, there's untold heartbreak that, that is very, very hard to undo.
I think what Mike Saban has taught me afresh is the power of one. Sure, he's taking on a giant of a problem, a hell of a problem, but people are starting to listen. It all makes me wonder if, 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 if more of us actually stepped up to the plate on this meth thing, if we could find it in ourselves to say, this is enough, could we as individuals with passion make a difference? Well, the answer to that's a little bit complex because the next bloke I, I meet nearly paid for his anti-meth initiative with his life. If I didn't pay the money, I was going to find my daughter dead in the boot of a car somewhere. Now, this is Dean, a kind-hearted Whangarei man who tried, along with members of his family, to help a woman who had serious drug problems. The woman's name was Lee Metham. Dean's family attempts to help Lee went terribly sour when she turned on them. Some of the texts she sent and some of the messages on the phones were, were horrifying. To the stage where, you know, I couldn't sleep at night. I'd, you'd be waiting outside for someone to come in your gate. I had my family in a hotel. Lee Metham entered a Vodafone store in Whangarei with a loaded air rifle. She was fried on pee. The man she was looking for wasn't at work that morning, and she was looking for Dean, who'd stayed home because he knew Lee was after him, seeking to pay back his family's kindness to her with a gun and a demand for cash, lots of it. I actually rang in sick, and it was only half an hour later that someone at work rang me and says, oh, that woman's on the shop with a gun. Got one of the staff hostage, so. It came to an end when Lee was shot by the armed defender squad, the first woman they've had to kill, actually, since the squad was established. That's what this stuff does to them. So if it can take a person like that, and I've seen it take a person like that and turn her into the monster she became, um, what's it doing to the others, you know? The whole thing traumatised, but also galvanised the owner of this Vodafone store. Did you know much about P before this day? Nothing. Nothing. So I, knew, I knew it was a, a drug that had a horrible effect on people. Did um, you make the link with P when she was in here? Uh, she... she she did say that um, she was after money because someone owed her money for P. Right. So I, that's where the link was. It provoked Brett, to the store owner, to work energetically with Northland Lions Clubs to get Mike Saban's drug education DVD into every home in Northland. It's a half million dollar initiative. We as a small company here in Whangarei decide every year how we're going to, uh, um, what sort of charities we're going to support or how we're going to raise money for a community project. Uh, we certainly um, uh, straight away looked at this and identified this as something that maybe we could, we could help try and eradicate. So, as I say, a two-edged sword, a risky business trying to help somebody with a pee addiction such as their paranoia. But at least it's motivated some Northlanders to fight back. Carl, you meet some people, don't you? I've met some people on this. I've learned a lot. Katie Robinson up in court on attempted murder charges. Miss Morrinsville, because of a pee addiction. The guys at Capri telling me about, warning me about beautiful young women through pee ending up as snaggle-toothed, poxed old whores. And then we've got a kindly bloke in Whangarei who almost paid with his life for the help he was giving to a woman with a pee addiction who was ultimately gunned down by the armed defender squad. Great stuff. It is 13 years since the first pee lab was busted in this country. It seems its tentacles have spread everywhere. I hope people have got some answers. We have to empower a generation of teenagers to turn against this nonsense that recreational drug use is and empower them to change course, to take a different pathway because we, their parents, uh, their, their, their lawmakers, their politicians have failed. We have failed at every level and in the last 30 or 40 years this journey with drugs, we have, the party's over, okay? And if we don't turn this around, if we don't give them the tools to turn it around, what legacy do we leave behind? What legacy will they grow, grow yeah. up to? Yeah, yeah. And that's where a bit of tough talking comes in. Our desire and passion is to help you think safe and think smart out there. I wanted to find out next what kind of education about P is out there. What are the kids hearing in the drug prevention lectures in school? And even more than that, what do the students say about the anti-drug education they're getting? I didn't wake up one day and just choose to become a drug addict. It came with a territory.
Did Alan Hall murder Arthur Easton? It's not about innocent or guilty. Police were looking for a six foot tall Maori aged about 18. It's about knowing the truth. Why was it that they ended up arresting a five foot eight asthmatic Pākehā? The final of Real Crime, The Investigator, Wednesday 9.30 TV1. Sarah was having trouble with her knee. She could barely keep up with Mr. Perkins. As she had Southern Cross health insurance, her doctor speedily arranged for her to see a specialist, Mr. Perkins. No, not that Mr. Perkins. After a quick operation and a bit of physio, Sarah was soon back to her best and running round with Mr. Perkins. No, not that Mr. Perkins. Sarah found it easy with Southern Cross. You see, we're not for profit. We're for you. Talk to your employer, advisor or call 0800 100 777. Got nasty condensation? Install an HRV ventilation system. Use the free warm air from up here generated by the sun to circulate warm, dry air down here and sort your condensation out. H. It's for happy families. It's never been a better time to upgrade your home. Come into Guthrie Baron this month and you'll get one third off all interior and exterior Guthrie Baron paint and one third off our fantastic range of wallpaper. Why move when you can have a new home at the same address? Guthrie Baron, the decorating specialists. This is how we play Toffee Pop Tumble. Okay, take your Toffee Pop, tilt your head back, and put it on your forehead. Now, only using your facial muscles, you've got to get it into your mouth. Ready? Get set, go. <laughs> Griffins, New Zealand's favourite biscuits. Create the garden of your dreams with colour screen fencing. Colour screen fences let Kiwis add the right finishing touch to their favourite outdoor spaces and create beautiful private family environments and shelter for the gardens. Made from colour steel, colour screen fencing's low maintenance, longer lasting colours give you more time to enjoy the peace and beauty of your home and garden. Call 0800 997 today for your free colour screen fencing brochure. Colour screen for beautiful fences. Paper Plus's grand sales on now with huge stationery savings. Like this letter shredder, now $59.99. This HP inkjet printer, just $89. Plus spend $50 and get a $10 voucher to spend in August. Grand sale on now. When pain strikes, Panvel Rapid gets to work fast. In fact, it's absorbed two times faster than regular Panvel tablets. Now fast pain relief is in the bag. In so many fresh ways, we help you to shop smarter. It was a long, painful death. She never knew. Was he brutally tortured before he died? That the hunt for a cold-blooded killer... No, then it wasn't me. ...could be so much fun. Oh, you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. The Closer, Friday 8.30, TV1. I think I've showed my kids work ethic. And probably, to be honest, looking back, I sometimes found it easier to deal with work, to deal with work than it was to deal with children. I've thought that a lot, actually. Whether because I had children late or because that's where I am, I don't know. But I wasn't home till about eight o'clock at night. I was always home. I mean, I hardly ever went out. I might have seen them for kind of half an hour, a quarter of an hour at night. Perhaps that wasn't enough. I sat in a high school auditorium one day and listened to a guy who I thought could help me with my next big question. Does anti-drug education work? To me, uh, I didn't wake up one day and just choose to become a drug addict. It came with the territory. You get involved in drugs, you become addicted, you dumb, do dumb things. You said you never would because the nature of addiction will drive you. Pat Buckley speaks of friends of his whose lives have been lost. More than 40 friends in all, lives lost to drugs. This is Pat's plea to a vulnerable generation. But this is an evil poison, which I have never seen a drug take out people as fast as this drug pee does. At 99% of the time, you're addicted after your first taste. 
This young girl got addicted to it. This is a police photo that was sent to me. They found her like that, backed up in that corner, psychotic, and fried in the brain as a result of the drugs. I do what I do today because of girls like Renee. So Pat and I had a bite of lunch together, and it was one of those precious moments where you feel you've established a connection with someone, where you're, you're speaking with one of the few survivors of the train wreck. A rare encounter with a guy you realise you desperately want to talk to. The thing is, you can't reach a person who's addicted to pee. You can't. You can't, Paul. You no longer can enter their world. I personally believe until a person's ready to be helped and that they're actually then placed into a long-term residential treatment facility, they're naive and arrogant to think that they're going to deal with their addiction. Because in my experience of dealing with addicts over 14 years, I've seen that change takes time. You have to change your whole life. Realistically, in my experience of dealing with addiction, there's only 3% success rate with recovering addicts, where they get long-term uh, and, and life-changing, sustained change from that, from that beast. It's not great, but I believe we can improve it with a combination of education, residential rehab programs, uh, follow-up and mentoring. Which is exactly what I'm concluding myself. We've got to have a better structure in place to help people when they're ready to change. In the meantime, does it work what Pat does? Does Pat really believe the things he's telling his audience are making a difference? And as you saw today, that room got very quiet because I'm talking about issues these young people are going through right now. And unless somebody tells them the truth, they're going to end up making some terrible choices as a result of that. And because the thing about you is kids know you're real. They see your arms, they see your tats, they hear your story. Yep. Well, kids are very uh, sharp and very intuitive when it comes to people, and they can spot BS a mile off. Yeah. My heart is to be real and to tell them that straight up. We live in such a PC world where it's you can't tell them that. Well, I'd rather tell them that now than have to pick them up in the back of my truck in three months. It's amazing that people like you are, are struggling to do this on shoestring budgets when your message is so lo uh, you know so strong and, and the problem is so widespread. Because poor people people choose to live with their heads in the sand and not acknowledge the the, the huge um, problem that we have in this country with this drug. And of course, in the end, what makes a guy like Pat so brilliant is that he really cares even about me and my girl. As I've followed the, the media articles on it, I've, I've really felt for you and, and, and under, understood the struggle, and especially being a high-profile person too, the, and often not having the tools on how to deal with these things is a big part of it. God, what tools are there? What do you do? And that's the thing, Paul, there is no quick fix. It's a long, concerted process of dedication to change. If I can ever do anything to be of a help to you. It's a very alone place you can't share with many because they're not even in the same place. OK. But are we actually reaching these kids? Some university research recently has questioned the long-term effectiveness of even tough talks like the ones Pat does. Our desire and passion is to help you think safe and think smart out there. I ask you one by one, what is the most important thing you took out of Pat's speech? Let's start over this corner. Um, that like the drugs like destroy your mind and like how you think, so like doesn't let you think properly. I think that the speech that he just told us will stay in my head for my life and I'll never take drugs and I think pee makes you look ugly. <laughs> You're writing your own story right now. You determine your destiny by the choices you make. Because he's, like, been through it, then that made it more, like, make us want to listen more because then we, you know... Do you think if someone like Pat went into schools all around New Zealand, mm -hmm. he could have a real influence? Of course. Mm -hmm. And then I think that more, more people who have been through it as well need to get into that type of thing. How many of you know kids who've tried pee? Is there a lot of it around? Of course. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure it's everywhere. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I've concluded this. Education is absolutely essential. Guys like Pat Buckley, we've got to get them into every school. And if it keeps one kid off pee, well, it's worth it, isn't it? And I'm going to do my bit too, to help beat this ugly menace. I've been asked to speak at a big fundraising dinner to raise awareness of the pee problem. I spoke to a friend and said, you know, I'm not sure I really want to do this dinner. She said, you've got to. You've got to do this. And she's a very good friend and a, and a prominent person. And she'll be there on the night. And nobody seems to be thinking ill or thinking, oh, there goes old Holmes again and, you know, 
maybe he wasn't too shit hot as a father or anything like this, do you know what I mean? So I think it's going to be very good in terms of ra raising awareness. Four Chinese men ran a sophisticated operation when police... Beyond that, I want to make a strong personal pitch to the new government about the availability of the materials the gangs are using to make pee. Ah, yes, I think I can get in the right ear. And if I can do that, maybe I can at least feel I've helped a little. You're in good company. Not just help the desperate Kiwi parents of peer addicted kids, but the largely unseen victims of the scourge, like my friend Janet, whose amazing story of courage I will share before we go. Dawn loves men, but... For the next month, I'm going to give up men and immerse myself completely into the world of gay women. An intriguing social experiment. Can I Changed by sexual desires. It may be harder than it looks. I'm trying really hard to focus on girls, but everything is reminding me of men. The only way that this experiment is going to work is if I push my boundaries. I'm feeling confident, corny, and slightly predatory. I'm feeling something that I've never felt before about a girl. Real life. Dawn goes lesbian. Next Tuesday, TV One. the next generation of television with phenomenal colors and astonishing picture quality introducing the new range of samsung led tvs you've never seen anything like it did you know daikin heat pumps are energy efficient quiet and intelligent and did you know daikin specialists give the right advice installation and support dad well, the Thompsons did. Daikin. We know heat pumps. Palisite weatherboards let you build distinctive homes that keep their good looks for years. Palisite's beautifully natural colours are built in to stay fresh without painting. Palisite weatherboards are designed to withstand New Zealand's tough conditions. When you want a home that still looks great after 25 years without painting, start with Palisade weatherboards and you'll have more time and money for the important things in life. Call today for your free sample pack. A delicious cafe-style cappuccino always reminds me of home. That's because I always have great coffee at home. New Makona Cafe Classics. Mmm. Now the world number one in anti-wrinkle creams is even better. New Revitalift from L'Oreal Paris, enriched with elastin. Essential for the youthfulness of your skin. With a complex that helps stimulate the synthesis of elastin fibres for more firmness and elasticity. And Pro-Retinol A to encourage the renewal of the epidermis to fight against wrinkles. My wrinkles appear reduced. My skin feels firmer, as though lifted. New Revitalift from L'Oreal Paris. The world number one. Now with elastin. Because you're worth it. The sharpest act in town, Export Meat Warehouse. This week, Butcher's own traditional corn silver side, the real thing, only $6.99 a kilo. And mouth-watering crumbed beef schnitzel, only $9.99 per kilo. Warehouse. Only while stocks last. The Export Meat Warehouse. What if you could create what others could only imagine? Media Design School. Text info to 0275 CREATE. The Big Moyes Pan Me now Auckland's latest Suzuki dealer. That means even bigger choice than Moyes. Top trade and prices on new Suzukis. Plus our usual great selection of used vehicles. Finance and trades welcome too. Moyes. Now first for Suzuki, opposite the Big McDonald's and beside the Big Mount Wellington. Everybody, come on, come on. The hottest ticket in Auckland is to the fastest show on earth. Starlight Express at Vector Arena. Ticketmaster now. This just might be the most fun you can have in the kitchen. Get ready to cook along with Gordon. Very, very simple and absolutely delicious. From his kitchen to yours, it's the ultimate cookery course. <laughs> cook along as are you ready? You and Gordon can simmer, saute and steam three dishes in an hour. Done. Get a list of ingredients from tvnz.co.nz and cook along with the master. Gordon Ramsay, cook along live, Saturday 7.30, TV1. The night dedicated to raising funds to beat P arrives and the crowd is sizable. The Maori Kenya's there. The organisers, the Stella Trust, have done a great job. 
were a great crowd. They listened, they bid generously on the auction items, and they sat quietly, and they heard my heart. I would not wish upon anyone what our family, what my Millie, have gone through because of P. It has broken our hearts. Our name, I suppose, has been disgraced. It's a kind of terrorism. You never know what's going to happen when the phone goes. You never know what the day is going to bring. Imagine sitting there doing the Paul Holmes breakfast at News Talk ZB and the lead item on the news in your headphones is your own daughter's arrest on charges that could get her 10 years. I've lost the beautiful little girl to whom I vowed to be a father all those years ago when one day she turned to me and called me daddy. I have lost her and I think I lost her long before I knew it. I hope with all my heart that we can together start to do something and I hope that our girl will one day be all right. I fear there is a very long way to go. Deborah and I were talking early on in the proceedings tonight, and it's amazing to see so many people here connected with the thing that has traumatized our lives and our family for so long. And I said to Deborah, suddenly I don't feel alone, do you? And she said, yes, we don't feel alone. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. They raised around $60,000 this night, a good leg up, well worth it, but of course, it's the beginning, there is much to do. In the end, the last port of call would have to be John Key, the Prime Minister. Now, I had told Mr Key and other politicians during the last election that Deborah's and my votes would go to whomever would make the war against P a major priority, and tonight he's talking my language. When I was actually first in Parliament, I hosted a meeting out in my electorate. Heard the stories of a guy that was driving down uh, one of the, the local roads with a three-month-old baby being held out the window by its feet. And, uh, and the, the guy who was high on pee and believed that the baby had been demonised. So, uh, yeah, you know, you're in these sort of truly bizarre and, and shocking stories. And uh, there's no, no question they're ripping the guts out of a lot of New Zealand families. So, do you have a sense of urgency, is what I want to know? Well, we do, um, but we also have a sense of realism, that there's a lot of component parts here, and it would be easy for me to get up and just say, look, this is the one thing we're doing, and we're going to, it's going to resolve it, or we're just going to throw a little bit of money at it, and that will help the problem. I think it's a bit more complex than that. And I think it is going to take a prime ministerial type initiative, where I can have access to the different ministries and resources. Now, we've been working on that for some time. Uh, we've been in government for six months, things don't always move quickly, but this is something that we need to try and keep progressing. Yeah. So can you tell me, as a father who's been to Helen back, as has my daughter and our whole family, that you are going to try and do something? Well, I'm definitely going to try and do something. Um, and I think trying isn't just enough, actually. I think we've got to be able to put up our hand and say we're going to be successful. Mm. Well, one thing that's interesting about our cabinet, actually, is we're, we're a young cabinet with a young family. I mean, my own children are 14 and 16. Uh, that's consistent across the cabinet. We have, a young, we have young families. So it's your worst fear, I think, that your child is the child that's, um, you know, ultimately coming from a good home, but, hey... It's all going off the rails. And so I think we're a young enough cabinet to understand those problems and that will help us. And Ben, in the week after the Stella Trust dinner, the New Zealand Herald runs a whole week's campaign about P, stories of lives ruined by P. And Ben, in the weekend, Herald on the Saturday, a front page editorial, it is an outrage that New Zealand should have the highest P infestation proportionate to population in the world. Politicians fond of preaching law and order have utterly failed to address this most devastating source of crime in our community. If this country puts its mind to it, we can stop this blight that's destroying lives, estranging families and presenting a public menace. Hallelujah. Then on a Tuesday, what we find? Prime Minister John Key is proposing to combat pee by banning its main ingredient, pseudoephedrine, from use in over-the-counter cold and flu tablets. Hallelujah. We may be getting somewhere. Well, it's been a gruelling old trip, this one. Those I've met along the way have had mixed fortunes. Young Christy, you'll be pleased to know, is doing well in Southland, studying hard, and she's staying well clear of bad stuff and bad company. 
Katie? Well, Katie went before a judge and jury in Hamilton. She was found guilty of aggravated burglary and serious crimes of violence. So she's locked up now, awaiting sentence, but she's happy she is still free of pee. Well, I had one more person I wanted to meet before I closed the book on this one for a while. Somebody who would give me some real personal perspective, the face of the pee epidemic. We scarcely ever see the invisible heroes like Janet. Janet is a grandmother. She has multiple sclerosis. A couple of years back, something terrible happened to one of her two daughters. And this event, series of events, seemed to swing the girl towards methamphetamine use, to the point where it became out of control, unmanageable. So Janet, who was a grandmother to her daughter's children, of course, now has to look after the children. Thank you, Janet. You're standing up. I am. Must have a mistake. <laughs> nice to meet Good you. To see you. Mm. Good to see you. This drug has just taken Lovely. her children, Thank her you. life, and everything that she's ever worked to build up. September, she was fine. Christmas, she was hooked. And by January, she's lost her house and she's lost her children. Three months. So it's really just, just heartbreaking to watch. It's a horror story, this. Janet's adult daughter, a mother, had taken in a young lad aged 16 from troubled circumstances and this led to an incident in the home which caused her daughter major fear and concern. So she kicked him out? She had him removed from the house. What happens next defies imagination. Janet's daughter and her children awake to find the little girl's pet mutilated in its cage. When she ran to the the cage to see it, it was slaughtered, its head was chopped off and she had this decapitated bunny. This ghastly scene is followed by a threatening phone call. Next thing the phone rang and said if further action was pursued... Um, against the boy? Against the boy, they could look out. Unfortunately, none of that... All that did was just shock her into a place whereby she really needed to keep her eye on the little girl. And P was the drug that she used to keep awake. Janet watched as her daughter's life spiralled into chaos. Sifs got involved, and Janet found herself, like so many other grandparents these days, raising her grandchildren. Not even losing her children to the welfare um, brought her back. At the threat of losing the children, the, the call of the drug is stronger, sadly. Have you spoken to other parents about your experiences of P in the family? I don't know where to go. I feel quite isolated in that one because um, the grandparents raising grandchildren have got a variety of reasons why they're doing that. Yep. And most of us keep our stories to ourselves and, and keep quite quiet and don't wish to share it. And that is something that's easy to understand when you're aware of the constant strain this disabled grandmother's been living with. Janet's daughter, having had custody of her children taken over by SIFs, now resorts to burglary and abduction of her little girl. She'd broken in through the little girl's bedroom window walked it to the front door and then disappeared off with her. Because the last state I'd seen her in was one of um, extreme paranoia, homicidal, suicidal. I had real fears for the little girl's safety. My family is still very strong and the children are safe within that family. Um, so it's hard to say my family's been destroyed, yeah. but my lifestyle has certainly been destroyed. And um, or it isn't even, it's altered, it's just altered. And I can't see any end. How do you begin to comprehend the pain of a grandmother like Janet? There's no way Janet deserves what's befallen her. How are the kids, the little one particularly? Did she miss her mother? Desperately. And if mum came through in the bedroom window tomorrow, she'd go with her. And it was funny, this weekend she's gone off to spend the first night with her father. And he said... We're looking at making it so that you can come and live with Daddy. How do you feel about that? And she said, yay! But when my mummy isn't doing drugs anymore, I can go and live with her again, can't I? Because it just breaks your heart. Because everybody will always be second best. And she wants her mum. And I could cry now. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Good luck now. Yeah. I left Janet this day more than ever convinced we have to fight P. Bye-bye. Bye. But I also know I have to be realistic about things I cannot control. A couple of weeks ago, Millie turned 21, and I didn't see her. I tried to call her 
uh, where she lives, uh, but I couldn't get hold of her. I, I sent her some flowers, which I, I hope that she got. She was the sweetest little girl, and she had a marvellous, clever little sense of humour. But 21 is 21, and a person gets to the point where they're an adult, and they have to be held accountable for their actions, and they have to take personal responsibility for what they do. And Millie's an adult now, and she's already damaged her life immeasurably. But the thing about methamphetamine is it is so addictive and the people involved in that world so questionable and so influential that you have to take that into account. I hope that she can move forward away from all of this and 